This is Jeffrey from Jeffrey App Tech, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I will be showing you part three of creating our second development with Dubot Magician Robotic Arm. Now, again, this is going to take a long time, but don't worry. We're going to get through this, and it's going to be worth it because you're going to be controlling your Dubot through Bluetooth, and that's cool. First of all, we'll get started with where we left off, which is with this if statement. First, you want to define your UI view, and we'll call it view, and we'll call it the recognizers view, just to get it out. And then we want to set the views tag. We'll not set it, but get it out. And then we want to get the jog command coordinate. Then we want to switch the tag. Case. We'll define a few cases. And for the first one, the command. Command equals jog command coordinate dot x plus we'll cut and we'll put in break and then we'll copy that and the case the next case is x minus and then y plus and y minus Then we have to have a default case with nothing to do. Then out of the switch statement, you want to set a jog command called jog command. And we'll e it will equal to curly braces with two parameters. First, we're going to convert it to UA int 8T mode and uint 8T command. Then we want to set our payload, of course. Then we want to set our payload jog command, command jog. Send MSG, then the payload. Then we're out of that if statement and we have some other stuff. What is the problem? Oh yeah, we forgot to capitalize that. And then we have an else if. Else if the recognizer dot state is equal to UI gesture second um and this time it's ended instead we'll do the exact same thing what we did here we'll just copy that but we're going to change some things first instead of having the ua int command it's ua int t jog command coordinate stop And there's nothing else to change and we are done with that function now we're going to knit the get current post timer which include just is knitting a timer again which we can do 
schedule timer time interval. And again, it's the third one. Time interval is 0 0.5. Target is self. Selector is at selector. And the selector is button, get pose, tapped. And then user info is nil and repeats is yes. Now, this timer will just be used to get to update the pose. And it updates it pretty well. Now, we're going to set get, did connect. And inside, we're going to say self update button BL, update button BL, update BLE connect. And if it did disconnect, then again, we're going to update the BLE connect. And then this is where it gets complicated. We have to set the MSG. Now, we're going to handle this one step by step, but it's going to take a long time. There are a lot of cases that we have to deal with. First, we want to set our payload, and it's equal to msg.payload. We don't have to mess around with anything else. And we want to switch the int version of the payload's ID. Now, there are a lot of cases that there are a lot of cases and most of them don't require any code. So we're only going to write the ones that have the code. And though the ones that don't have any code will be included in default. Case protocol. And this is jog coordinate params. Jog coordinate params p. Now we're going to get the bytes and length of p. Get bytes of p and length of size of p. That's it for that case, and we can just say break. Now we're going to define our other cases, and I'm going to copy that and paste it again. And this will be PTP. And this time it will be PTP commands. Hmm. Why do we have a problem here? What's the problem here? Hmm. Well, let's take a look and just make sure you didn't forget any curly braces or any parentheses. Oh, hmm. No, but is it because of we didn't put in those extra cases in the beginning? Well, that's the reason. Let's go back and we'll put in some empty cases that don't actually have anything to do. Break. But it has to have a semicolon. And then case protocol get pose. There we go. Now we'll move on with this one. And we will put it in a uh, format. NS string text equals an NS string with string with format. Percent sign zero F. Sorry, it's point zero F. 
and then RV percent sign point zero F X Y Z A percent sign point zero F R A and then percent sign point zero F and then comma P dot X Y Z velocity P dot R velocity P dot X Y Z acceleration and P dot R acceleration. Now that's it for that case, and we'll move on. Case protocol PTB command. This one's empty. We can just paste that. Case protocol CPP commands. CPP params P. Then you want to get the bytes in the size of P. And sign P. And size of P. Hmm, let's go back here. Did we forget any kind of curly brace? Doesn't seem like it. Look here, look here, look here. Is there an ending one for that? Okay, let's continue. Then, we want to define our NS string, which is for our text. Again, we're going to display it. And there are two different ways it can go down. If it's a real-time track, and if it's not. P dot real time track. And we want to set the text to and a string and um, we have to put that in curly braces string with format and it's CP plan account percent sign point zero F junction velocity percent sign point zero F period percent sign point zero F real time track percent sign D and the parameters are plea dot plan account P dot junction Velocity P dot period and P an integer type P, P dot real time track. And if it's not a real time track. Then the text is slightly different, but we can still copy it. Just some slight changes. Let's look over it. What are the differences? First, instead of period, it's account and the real time track stays. But this p dot period changes to p dot acc. All right. Now we're done with that case and we can put in a break
Hmm, what's the next case? C case CP command, which we is also empty. Therefore, we can put this in. P protocol CP command, and there's nothing there. Then we want a case of proto call queued command current index. Now this does have some stuff. U int, and this is a 64T. We'll call it P again. This time it's payload. Dot params. And again, get bytes and length. Then you want to do break. And now we want to set our end effector params. Case, protocol, end effector params. End effector params. We'll call it P again, sadly, because we use that name so much. Payload.params, get bytes, and length. Now we continue. Case protocol end effector laser. There's nothing there. And then case protocol queued command stop executing. And there's nothing there. So we break. Then we do case protocol queued command start executing. But there's again nothing there. And then we're on to our default case and we're done. That is our handle MSG. And in the next part, we'll be setting up the IB actions as well as everything else. I'll see you then.